coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. NASA says medical issue will bring Crew-11 home early. FCC doubles SpaceX's Gen 2 satellite cap. Helicopter crash ignites criticism over slacklining. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talon Blake. Let's get into today's stories. NASA says medical issue will bring Crew-11 home early. NASA announced it's bringing the astronauts of Crew-11 home early because of what they called a medical concern with one member of the crew. The astronauts are approaching the end of a six-month stay aboard the ISS, and returning them to Earth in the next few days would not shorten their planned mission by much. Administrator Jared Isaacman has announced the decision has been made to bring Crew-11 home early. He said that one of the crew members experienced a medical incident, but is now stable. During the ensuing 24 hours, the crew and NASA staff on Earth determined that, despite the astronaut being absolutely stable, given that the crew has accomplished almost all of its mission objectives, it's in the best interest of crew safety that the members of Crew-11 be returned to Earth in the next few days. The Crew-11 astronauts are Zena Cardman and Mike Fink of NASA, JAXA astronaut Kimia Yui, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platonov. Their original mission plan had them staying aboard the ISS until February. Dr. James Polk, NASA medical officer, emphasized that the crew member is stable and he would not describe the situation as emergent or urgent, but that prudence and an abundance of caution dictate the astronaut return to Earth expeditiously to continue the diagnosis of the issue. After the break, latest addition to the Citation Gen 2 family enters service. It's time to upgrade your power plant to the first FAA-certified clean sheet engine design in over 60 years. Delta Hawk's jet fuel-powered liquid-cooled turbocharged engine produces turbine performance at 40% better fuel efficiency of typical reciprocating engines, while also achieving exceptional reliability and significant reduction in cost of ownership. Reserve your engine package today at DeltaHawk.com. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Latest addition to the Citation Gen 2 family enters service. Textron has placed the Cessna Citation CJ3 Gen 2 into the hands of its first customer, marking the newest entry into the Citation Gen 2 lineup. The aircraft was delivered in Wichita to loyal Citation owners Dave McCartney and Shannon Day. The ZJ3 Gen 2 received the FAA's nod of approval in October 2025 and comes as what Textron describes as its most comprehensive Gen 2 update so far. Rather than a clean sheet redesign, the aircraft builds on the well-loved CJ3 platform with targeted improvements to workload reduction, pilot comfort, and cabin usability. Top Performers Commit to Air Venture 2026 Some of the world's top air show performers have made commitments to fly at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh 2026 as part of the afternoon and night air show lineups. Performers at the 73rd EAA Fly-In Convention, scheduled for July 20th through 26th at Whitman Regional Airport, include aerobatic champions and longtime Oshkosh favorites. The event features nine air shows over seven days, including night air shows July 22nd and 25th. Dyer Kodiak and TBM continue growth in market. The Dyer TBM and Kodiak turboprop aircraft lines noted new delivery milestones in 2025, as well as growth in their customer bases with owners, operators, and public service agencies. Dyer delivered a total of 76 aircraft last year, including 51 TBM 960s and 25 Kodiaks of both the mainstay Kodiak 100 and the larger Kodiak 900 variant. The TBM line is produced in Tarbes, France, and the Kodiaks are made in the company's U.S. facility in Sandpoint, Idaho. Alaska Airlines places largest ever Boeing order. 
Boeing and Alaska Airlines jointly announced the largest ever aircraft order by the carrier in its plan to expand domestic and international networks, as well as replace a portion of its existing fleet. The order is for a mix of models and includes 105 737-10 aircraft with options for an additional 35 and 5 787 Dreamliner wide-body jets. The 737 MAX order will grow and replace the airline's high-density, single-aisle routes and modernize its fleet. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. FCC doubles SpaceX's Gen 2 satellite cap. The FCC has opened the door for SpaceX to double its second-generation Starlink network, authorizing the company to operate up to 15,000 Gen 2 satellites. According to the FCC, quote, SpaceX is authorized to construct, deploy, and operate an additional 7,500 Gen 2 Starlink satellites, bringing the total to 15,000 satellites worldwide. This expansion will enable SpaceX to deliver high-speed, low-latency internet service globally, including enhanced mobile and supplemental coverage from space, end quote. Combined with approvals already in place for the first-generation Starlink constellation, SpaceX is now cleared to operate nearly 19,400 satellites in orbit. The authorization also gives SpaceX more technical flexibility, giving the company access to new orbital shells at altitudes ranging from roughly 340 to 485 kilometers, as well as broader access to KU, KA, V, E, and W band frequencies. These changes target improvements to network performance, capacity, and fixed satellite broadband and mobile satellite services. This expansion builds on the initial 7,500 approval in 2022. This contract kept SpaceX's operating parameters limited to give the FCC time to review concerns related to orbital debris and space safety. So, while still stopping short of SpaceX's request for 22,000-plus Gen 2 satellites, the updated approval is a major sign of earned trust. The decision also strengthens Starlink's mobile ambitions. After these messages, helicopter crash ignites criticism over slacklining. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com DirectFly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single-engine, two-seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all-metal aircraft design provides low-maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. Helicopter crash ignites criticism over slacklining. A recreational tightrope, called a slackline, strung half a mile across a remote Arizona canyon, likely triggered a helicopter crash that killed four family members from Oregon. The tragedy has drawn scrutiny of a little-known extreme sport with scant oversight, even as participants rig longer slacklines across public lands, heightening the risk to aircraft. An eyewitness and the Pinal County Sheriff's Office have said the helicopter appeared to hit the slack line, which was hanging 600 feet in the air south of Superior, Arizona, on January 2nd. The FAA NOTAM system, quote, is broken and has been for a while, end quote, according to one aviator close to the tragedy, writing to thousands of slack line enthusiasts this week. DJ Vey, a manager of Pegasus Air Park, where the helicopter took off before the fatal crash, said, quote, I feel like had there been an open channel between slackliners and local pilots, there may have been a chance four people would still be alive, end quote. In a January 6 post to the Facebook group Slack Chat, he said, quote, The pilot was a neighbor and a friend. Please help me make this tragic event a catalyst for change that benefits slackliners and pilots and helps my friend and his niece's deaths not be for nothing, end quote. Everyone on board died, including 59-year-old pilot David McCarty and his three nieces. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.